Hi. Today we're going to be looking at pine, not a pine, in terms of tree identification. First, not all things that are evergreens are pines. Some are pines, spruces, firs. There are even some conifers, which is what we generally call pines, that are deciduous, meaning they lose their needles. And we'll take a look at those later. The first thing to look at for a pine tree is that it has an actual pine cone. And you can see this here. The cone scales are woody. And we'll look at papery cone scales of the spruce later. And you can see that things like fir don't tend to have cones available or visible year round the way you might see with pine cones. The next thing we're going to take a quick look at are how needles are arranged on a pine tree versus on a spruce or a fir tree. One of the things you'll notice with pines, as opposed to spruce or fir, is that their needles are connected together in groupings of two, three, or five. Here we have an eastern white pine, and we can see that there are five needles connected all together. And they're connected at the end with a little woody fascicle, or a bundle, that connects it to the twig. If we look at an actual twig, you can see that every grouping or bundle of needles is connected at one individual spot. Here we have another pine, and again we can tell it's a pine because as we see the needles here are attached in groups of two on this particular pine. This is known as Scott's pine, and you'll see that the needles in groups of two, much shorter, and have a slight twist to them. Uh, the cone on spot Scott's pine is also a bit smaller, and we'll look at later on a couple of different pine species, this little spot right here sometimes has a thorn or a prickle on it, and you can use that to identify what type of pine that you're looking at. So Scott's pine, smaller, no prickle, and two needle, usually fairly short. Scott's pine also has a fairly distinctive orange bark in the younger growth or further up in the canopy, and we'll show a picture of that shortly. If you look into the upper portion of a tree for a Scots pine, you'll often notice the orange flaking bark, and you can notice that on younger or smaller branches as well. Continuing on with pine not a pine, we can see that we're looking here at a pine. And if we look very closely, we can see that these needles are grouped in twos and sometimes threes. This is ponderosa pine. You'll also notice at the very end of pines, you might see these sort of purplish looking cones. Those are newly developing cones. Pines, unlike spruces or firs, take two years for their pine cones to fully mature. On the Ponderosa pine, the cone is bigger than what we saw on the Scots pine, and bigger than what you might see in an Austrian pine. And the Ponderosa pine has little armed, this is called an umbo, but it has little prickles or little thorn-like structures that go throughout, and those stay on the cone regardless of cone age. If we look closer here, If you look closer here, you can see, even on the young cone, tiny little thorn-like structures coming off the cone. Continuing with the pine, not a pine, now we're going to look at a spruce. So behind me is a spruce, and a couple of things to note is how the spruce needles are attached. They're never in groups, it's always a single needle attached to a twig, and their cones are a bit different. Spruce cones, unlike fir cones, will always hang straight down off of the twig once they're mature. And if we look closely, you can see that the spruce cone, unlike the pine cone, has more of a papery scales instead of the real woody scales that we see in the pine. So now we're going to take a closer look at the single needle attachment on a twig of a spruce. So if we look closely at a spruce twig, we'll notice that these needles are individually attached. And they're attached on spruces with a tiny little wooden peg, if you can see that in there. 
So right at the base you'll see what looks like a little wooden peg. On furs, which we'll look at later, the needle attachment looks like a tiny suction cup. Since we're filming this in the spring, you can see that these needles on the ends look a little bit different in direction. This happens to be a Colorado spruce or a Colorado blue spruce, which is part of why it has this coloring to it. And these are the newest needles, so they tend to be very soft. If we go back to needles that are a year or more old, we'll notice that they're extremely sharp and very, very stiff. This is what you'd expect throughout most of the year, but in the spring you might see just where they're starting to emerge. So here we're looking at Norway spruce. Notice that the color is a little bit different. Even the color of the twig appears a little bit redder than what we saw on the Colorado blue spruce. The needles themselves are also a little less sharp and they tend to point forward toward the twig as opposed to standing straight up that we might have seen on the Colorado spruce. The needles here are also a bit shorter but we'll see that they are still singly attached. So if you're trying to distinguish between a spruce and a pine, we can see that these needles are still singly attached to the twig versus in groups that we'd see in the pine. Notice that the cone is pointing straight down as it's mature. And these are fairly large, probably the largest one we'd see in this area for a spruce cone. And again, the cone scales are papery and so they're not woody like we might have seen in the pine cone. Here we're looking at a fir. And the fir, you can see the needles all point more upward and they tend to be much softer than what we see in the spruce. Also, if we look closely here, you can see that the needles are attached in what looks like a little suction cup. And they're always singly attached. If you crush the needle, break it and crush it a couple of times, and smell it, you'll notice a real citrusy smell to that. It's very distinctive. Most people uh, like the smell and it might remind you of the holidays. Also, on fur, instead of seeing cones that hang down off the branch, if you see cones at all, they'll typically be at the very top part of the tree and they'll point upward, always sitting upward. And the cones on a fir are deciduous, meaning that at the end of the season they completely break up and disperse in the wind, which is how the seeds are dispersed. That's why you typically don't see fir cones, especially through the spring and summer. You might see them in the fall or winter.